Okay, and this session what we're going to look at is the link constraint. Uh, so, I've um, just got this little animation where basically I've got this platform that slides in and then this platform that goes down like a lift. So what I want this ball to do is move onto this platform, go along with this platform, move onto this one, go down on the lift, and then move onto this platform. So, uh, again, what I've just done with this is create a point helper, put to the base of this sphere. So I've got this as the motion controller. So normally, if it was to do this, the way you might approach it is to actually go in and start doing links. But if I start doing that, okay, link that to that, moves into this, and then we get to this frame where it stops, and then we say, okay, we'll link it to this. Now it's going up and down, but it's not following that anymore. Um, and this is a problem with just using these normal select and links. They do limit what you can do with something. Let's do this back. So if you want an object to follow multiple objects, you want it to link to multiple objects, uh, this is where we can use a link constraint. So let's go into so, point helper, go to animation constraint, uh, link constraint. And first of all, I'm just going to link it onto this box. So now you can see, much like the select and link, it's following that object. So I'm just going to do a little bit of animation on this. So I'm just going to move it in. And then, uh, okay. so now frame 10, it stops. And I'm just going to set a position key. That's for this control object. And just animate this forward. Onto our lift platform. Uh, much with the select and link, even though this is linked to this object, I can still animate this object individually as well. So I'm bring that in, across. So this is the beauty of the link constraint now. Click a photo key, let's click back on this and make sure we're in our motion panel under our uh, main thing, main properties. So what we can do with this under the link parameters is we can add another link. Uh, so at this point in time, wherever you want it to link to this next object, make sure the timeline is in the right place. Add link, and then I can just click on the other box. So at frame 0 is following box 001, and frame 18 is following box 002. Okay, and that just follows it down. And also follows all the animation of that, so we don't need to deal with any of that on the sphere itself. I won't have to keyframe all of this individually. And I can just finish that off just by getting to the end. Um, again, I'll just create a position keyframe. And then just auto key this out. Now, one thing we do have to be aware of is if this lift was, say, going back in the air. So, uh, let's finish it from there. Let's say at that point it starts going back up in the air. See what happens is this also starts following as well. Um, so there's a couple of different things we can do with this. If we had that situation, let's bring this back so it's. You can see as that starts going up, that starts going up with it. Uh, so what we can do is we could go in and add a another link and we can link to this object or if we want to free this object Compton completely you know if we didn't want it to follow this movement um, what we could do is link to world so at this frame before this animation starts around frame 45 I'm just going to link to world and that it's no longer been affected by any of the other animation. Okay. And that's the link constraint.